This is how to bold different words with apps script without losing the existing formatting. And that last part's actually what's important here. It's relatively simple to bold different words, but this is a trick of how to retain the existing formatting. This was actually inspired by a question on the official Google product forums, bold specific words within cell using app script. And what they were finding is that it was searching for a word. And then when they run the script again for a different word, it was overriding the existing styling. We don't want that. <laughs> we want to make sure that we are bolding what we want to and retaining the existing styling. That's what we're going for here. Here's a spreadsheet I set up and it's really simple. I'm just using this little set, these three words. What I want to have happen is when I run the script on a specific word, I want it to bold that word. And then let's say I'd run it again on the word words instead of three, I want it to then look like this. Instead of like this. All right, so let's first show how the original script works and how to just bold generally, and then what we're going to do to make it work to retain existing formatting. Extensions, app script brings us to this window. I just already have it up to save the time. Now I'm going to call this bold stuff really straightforward. I always like to declare the spreadsheet and the sheet. I don't know if that's always necessary. Actually, I know it's not always necessary, but you need the spreadsheet to get the sheet anyway. And that way, if I ever need to use the spreadsheet, I already have it there. So const sh equals spreadsheet app dot get active. Um, actually, I'm not going to do get active. I just want spreadsheet app const ss equals sh dot get active sheet. And let's throw in the dot get active here so I have the full layer. Then I'm going to declare a constant of a text style const bold equals sh dot new text style. Then here there's a lot of stuff set bold, the family, the size, the color, if it's italics or underlined. For this example, we're just going to use set bold, but this works for all the different values in here. Set bold is, oops, set bold <laughs> is true. And then build it. I'm not sure why some things need this extra build here, but if it shows up, when you hit a period and it has a build there, you're probably going to need it. So basically what we're doing until here is setting what these parameters should be. And then on build, we're actually setting it back into bold. We're actually making it a real thing that can be used later. I'm also going to declare my range as constant. And that's going to be SS, the sheet dot get range. I could declare this as a one notation or with row and column notation. When I'm dealing with scripts, I almost always prefer to use row and column numbers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not actually going to get a value right now because I want to use the range itself. Let our val equals r dot get rich text value. Rich text as opposed to value is what contains information about if it's bolded, if it's italicized, what size it is, what font it's in, all of that. All of that is contained in a rich text value. Then my search value is going to be the word three. And let's go look at what it looks like when when I look for this value inside of for for this search value inside the rich text value. So if I do or rather what I'm going to need out of it. So I'm going to declare an out value. And for this, I'm going to declare it as a rich text value. So that's sh dot new rich text value. You have to build it at the spreadsheet level before you're allowed to use it at the sheet level. Here it actually gives a nice code block saying how to bold the word hello inside there. Set text, set text style, build, and then set the value into the cell. 
So what I'm going to do is set the text of my out value is the same as rval dot get text. All right. Now, if I want to set bold here, out val dot set text style, here's what I need to give it. Let's try that lower so we can actually see it. I need to give it a start offset. That's where in the string this text house should start. I need to give it an end offset, which is the end, the ending location where this styling should start, should stop, and then what style we're actually applying here. So for instance, if I wanted to bold the first five characters, I would do start offset zero, end offset five, and then bold. Okay, what I'm gonna use is we want to be using this search value in there. So in order to get a start value and an end, a start offset and an end offset or start position and end position, I'm going to declare start equals search val, nope, equals r val, <laughs> dot get text, dot index of, search file. So show me the position where the word three occurs within the text of our vowel. All right. So let me come back down here and my set text style, the start is going to be start. The end offset is going to be start plus search file dot length. So that, that way, because this isn't an offset, I know it's calling it an offset here. That's an offset from the beginning of the string, not from the substring. I think it's confusing, but that's what they decided to do. So I want to start from start and then go as long as start is. That's what I'm doing. And bold. Then we can simply do range dot offset. I'm just gonna go one cell lower like we did before. Row offset one, column offset zero, dot set rich text value. Okay, we have to stay working the rich text values or this whole thing will fail. Set rich text value out val dot build. As we saw before, it does have to be built to be able to be used within the spreadsheet. Let's save it. When I run this for the first time, it's gonna ask me for the permissions. I'm sorry, you can't see that screen. Oh, it's taking a while to get there this time. All right, review permissions. Now let's talk you through what I'm saying. I need to choose my account. On the left, I need to choose advanced. Then on the bottom, I choose go to untitled project and allow. Oh, R is not defined. Where is that? There we go. I usually just use R, but for some reason I wanted to use R and G, so auto typing. Let's try that again. Execution started, completed. All right, great. So now it bolded the word three in the phrase these three words. Now I want to start with the range row two, column one, so starting from this one, and I want to bold the word words. So let's run it again. So now we can see why this version can be challenging. Because here it correctly bolded three and here it correctly bolded words, but it didn't remain, it didn't keep the word three bolded. We wanna keep that. So now we need to look at the concept of a run. So let's go back into our project and right under our val, I'm going to declare let runs equals our val dot get runs. Let's look at what this says. Returns the rich text string split into an array of runs, wherein each run is the longest possible substring having a consistent text style. That's a lot to understand. So let me show you what that means. So this 
phrase, these three words with nothing bolded, italicized, anything, has one single run. That run is these three words. This string, these bold three words, has two or three runs. These three words. This one has two runs. These three words. And this is true no matter how many different styles are built into it. So if I take these three words, bold, styled words, that's what I want. These three styled words, these three styled words. If I take then and italicize the word styled, now I have four runs. These three styled words. I hope this makes sense. This is a pivotal and crucial element to understand for this whole thing to work out. So again, a run is the longest substring that has a consistent style. So it's as long as you can go without running into a new style, be that bold, italics, strike through, text color, underline, font size, font, any of those things will make a new run. Even here, where, they sh where the word three and the word styled share a, f a style, that is the bold, but styled has an extra one, that's the italics. So, I need to do the runs. That sound wrong. I need to get how many runs there are in this string. Returns the text string, split into runs. Then, after I've declared what outval is, I want to loop through the runs of rval and set each of those styles into my out val. Let me show you what I mean. For let i and run, so loop through everything in the array uh, that I called runs. Out val dot set text style, and we've already seen this. I need to give a starting position, an ending position, and what style we're doing. So for each run, the start position is going to be runs i dot get start index. The ending position is going to be runs i dot get end index. This is getting tedious. Let run. Run equals runs i. Usually if I'm using something more than once, I'm going to want to put that into its own variable so that it's not calling back to the same place every time. Run dot get text style. So all I'm doing here is saying for each of the various styles inside of this string, get the start position, the end position, and the style. In other words, copy the existing styles into my new variable. Then I want to do this one. Okay, so after I've put all of the existing styles into my value, my variable outval, then I want to add my new style into outval. I guess you could do it the other way, but this is the way that made sense in my head. Like theoretically, I, th I suppose you could put out this first and then all of these. Um, yeah, this way made sense to me. <laughs> so I'm copying everything in first and then adding the new one and then doing the offset and pacing. So let's change this back to three and change this back to a one. Make sure we're all clear here. Great. Run it. All right, so now it bolded the word three. Then we're gonna change this back to two. Change this to words. Save it. Run it. So now what I hope to see in cell A3 is the string these three words where the word 
these three, sorry, the word three and the word words are both bolded. And that's exactly what we have. I can do it again. Starting from three, looking up these, save it, run it, and now it'll have everything bolded in the A4. So here's what we saw. First, in order to deal with bolding, italics, styles, we need to get the rich text value, not just the value. We need to build all of the styles we're going to be using. If you're just doing a single type of formatting, just building it out each time is perfectly fine. But if you want to retain existing formatting as you put in new formatting, you need to use the runs across it where the run is the longest substring that has a consistent style. We're going to copy each style from those runs into our out variable, add the new style we want, and then set that back into the spreadsheet where we want it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do all the normal things like subscribe, share, and I do try to stay very active in the community. So you can connect with me on email, my website, LinkedIn, X, the official product forums. I'm even on a couple Discord servers about spreadsheets. And then if you have any larger projects, I do take on consulting work as well as needed.